We're here to celebrate the life of Ed Collins. And uh, today we're joined by Ed's widow, Desi. Hi, Desi. Thank you for coming today. And uh, his daughter, Beverly. Beverly, thank you for coming. Beverly's right there. She is. And uh, many friends and family to pay respect to Ed, uh, to dedicate our private dining room in his honor, along with sharing some uh, personal memories. So. Uh, again, thank you for coming. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Nathan Toro, who has a few words he would like to say. Nathan. All right, thank you. All right, and I also want to echo uh, Ken's thoughts. So thanks everybody for coming today. Um, a lot of you know this, but Ed worked for Barclay House for nearly 15 years, and as we all know, he was more than just the first person who greeted us at the door. You know, he was that smiling face, you know, that really made our day. Um, he represented Bethesda in such a positive way. I mean, we all saw that every day when he was here. He was such professionalism. I mean, he was the T when it came to professionalism. A coat and a tie. So, Mr. Allen. And we all know, we all know his, uh, his, favorite, his favorite quote was, he was the lady's pet and the men's regret. We all, we all know that. So, uh, I, I didn't want to leave that out. So. And, and over the years, we had many comments, many letters to management on Ed, you know, what a difference he made. And that style of customer service and that kind of class is kind of missed sometimes in this generation. So it's really neat to see, you know, what the difference he made to this community. Uh, and because of that fact, I mean, he left such a huge impact on all of our lives, residents, staff, even guests. Um, you know, that we really wanted to recognize him, Pam, Ken, and myself. So uh, one way that we thought we would do this is what we're doing here today, just celebrating Ed's life, maybe sharing some great stories and memories, and we wanted to dedicate a space in the community to Ed. So what we uh, decided to do was uh, dedicate our private dining room in Ed's honor and, and uh, name it the Collins Room. <laughs> hang this tomorrow, but uh, it says, of course, the Collins Room in memory of Ed Collins for his many years of dedicated service to Bethesda Barclay House uh, in 2014. And I'm, I think I'm going to turn it over to Pam now. Every time I walk through the front door of Barclay House, I could always count on a hug from Ed. And sometimes a kiss. <laughs> uh, he was such a kind man um, and a good man. Ed would have done anything for Bethesda Health Group Foundation, anything for our seniors, and any just he himself was a senior, and he really did live the mission of Bethesda. And I'm really gonna miss him a lot. Um, don't get me going here. Um, Ed was such a good man. He did things in a good way uh, and, and for the good. In fact, um, I brought a poem with me today, and I'm not gonna show you up, Jack, but because I didn't write the poem. Um, but it's a poem that really, um, it states how Ed really lived his life, at least the part that I know of. So if you give me a few minutes here, and I can have this poem in my pocket. It's not very long, so I won't bore you. The poem's actually written by uh, Robert Louis Stevenson. Wow. For those of you who know Robert Louis Stevenson, and I hope I can get through this without crying. Okay. Uh, the man is a success who has lived well, laughed often and loved much, who has gained respect of intelligent men and the love of children, who has filled his niche and accomplished his task, who leaves the world a better place than he has found it, whether an improved poppy or a perfect poem or a rescued soul, who lacked, never lacked appreciation for the earth's beauty, who failed to express it or even looked to the best in others, and gave all the best that he had. And that's really how I knew Ed. He was really a good man. Um, so that's, that's how I remember him. I'm going to miss him. So I'm going to give my answer to other people. But anyways, we're going to now continue the program with Leslie Peasel, who is our great right, coordinator, so and who will we'll continue to celebrate Ed's life. Memories are one of the most common ways that people stay connected to those who have died. As a grief counselor, I hear many life stories retold by family members, friends, and loved ones. Each told a different way, each version stressing different parts of what made that person so special to them. These stories 
although often very hard to tell, are so important to share with others because in sharing them, we keep the memories alive. And isn't that what we all want in our lives? We want our memories to remain strong. We want our presence on this earth to become a part of our loved ones, our friends, our family, our acquaintances, acquaintances, or even people that we may not even know that well. But somehow we touched their lives, knowing or unknowingly. I believe we all want to leave this world feeling like we've made a difference, to find meaning and purpose for our life, and to have our stories retold. A quote I found that seemed to be uh, pretty fitting is, when someone you love becomes a memory, that memory becomes a treasure. The author un unknown. Ed has left many of us with treasures. Now we would like to take some time to let anyone in this room share a special memory about Ed. So if anybody wants to share anything at all, they can come up. Jack, Jack is what Bucky Jack said. Right. I always got to wait a little while. <laughs> this little poem is called Ode to Ed. We owe a lot to our Ed, for without you we'll never be the same. You're good and you're cheerful, plus caring a fistful, we miss you and cherish your fame. For 15 years we've known and loved you. Everyone here wants to greet you. Your blue jackets welcomed all to the Barclay. As meter and greeter, you couldn't be sweeter. While making us all feel so sparkly, we'll remember you, Ed, now and always. We present for your praise in our hallway. This plaque is to signify many years of your dignity. We miss you and think of you always. We raise a glass to our head who has class. From all of our residents and staff, you're the best. Irreplaceable. I have to tell you, when my wife and I came here, and we were new, and Ed was always at the desk, but what I always remember, the Continental Breakfast. We were back there, and we were new, and kind of wondering, what do you do here? <laughs> so I, Ed came back and was always making sure that we had coffee back there and I said you know do you think I could have another donut and then said oh go ahead you're paying for it <laughs> I know all the employees were very close to Ed oh, and one thing funny was when you would turn the corner and see him with that big cowboy hat on but uh, my memory I used to make Ed a bagel every morning for breakfast after I would come in and if anybody else would try to do it, he would say no, because he liked mine because it always had extra butter and extra jelly on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ed and I had one fun thing that we did every Monday. We each put a dollar in and bought a Mega Million ticket. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I think it was like three years, and um, we won once, we won four dollars. <laughs> okay, and for our closing prayer. Gracious God, we came to this place as people who have each been touched by death. We have lost family and friends recently and in the past. We came to remember, to grieve, and to celebrate the precious gift of this person, Ed Collins. May we leave here with grateful hearts, May we leave here committed to live our lives fully with hope and with confidence that you walk this journey with us. Amen. Amen.